Hello over in the middle of here. I'm at Golders Green today. I haven't been back here in a while, not since my recent holidays. And I'm going out to the crematorium uh, to visit the grave of Lynn Fredericks, who was famously an actress in 1970s British movies. And she, but she was mostly remembered for being Peter Sellers' third and last wife. And um, truth be told that she got the bulk of his estate. And then, since she passed away in 1994, her daughter now has the bulk of Peter Sellers estate and lives in America. Uh, last year, a great guy in America called Foster uh, Hitchman, that's his name, yeah, he asked me to go to the crematorium and film Lynn Sellers' grave, because that's what her grave says, Lynn Sellers. So I went there, filmed some shots, and my footage was featured in the documentary about Lynn Frederick, which is right online. It's uh, down in the link below. Go check it out. Uh, you see, because when I... I've been living in the UK now for four years. And I never knew anything about Lynn Fredericks. And I didn't even know anything about Peter Sellers at all. Or like the Pink Panther. Like, I knew well about the Pink Panther, but because those Pink Panther movies, they never had anything about the actual Pink Panther cartoon, except for the intro. That just put me off, I'm like, well, that's not really Pink Panther, I'm here to see that cartoon about the Pink Panther, not the, you know, what do you call it? Yeah, but, but um, you see, when I was growing up, uh, my mom used to listen to a lot of the Goon shows, like the, the famous Goon show, that had like, you know, Peter Sellers, and uh, uh, Peter Seacombe, and uh, that Irish guy, I think, what was it, Irish? Uh, Spike Milligan, yeah. See, my mom had like eye surgery and she couldn't read uh, because of her eye science, so, like after having a cornea transplant. So she used to play uh, the Goon Show like uh, tapes with me and laugh her head off. And then last year, I was hanging out with Jordan the Lion and we went to a pub in Westminster where they recorded the Goon Show. So it kind of brought back some good memories. So I'm closing in now on Gordon's Green. So here I am. Doors Green Crematorium that way, Hoop Lane, which is also the name of the Jewish cemetery right there. You can remember the crematorium is on the right hand. So as tradition, I normally visit the plaques that commemorate Keith Moon and Mark Bolin, who died like a year apart. Uh, just in case you're wondering, they're not buried behind these walls. Uh, Keith Moon's buried on the fields, and then Mark Bolin is buried on the rose bushes. It just, uh, it was nice to stop and reflect. So every time I come here, I always tend to do a bit of a loop. So it always tends to be like Mark Bolin, Paul Kossif, Keith Moon. Uh, and now, since I uh, came here in June 2018, Lynn Fredericks. Uh, I've never actually been to Peter Sellers' grave, but I hear it's nearby, like where Lynn is buried. So this is where the legendary Mark Bolin is buried, and with his parents. So here are two roses for you, Mark. Rest in peace. Your music lives on, and your grave is always filled with glitter and stars from adoring fans. And even fans like to leave flowers on the bench that honors T-Rex and Mark Bolin's legacy. So I haven't really loved his grave much, but uh, this is where Paul Kossif and his parents' ashes were scattered. Um, his father David lived a really long life and did a lot of anti-drug campaigning because his son died really young, at like 26 or 25. The one thing that shocks me is that Paul Cosmo actually died of a heart attack aboard a plane in America. And even though he only had 26 years on Earth, his legacy isn't defined about how big or small or free he were. It's basically how he's a big influence to guitarists of my generation. Like Sarah Michelle, the guitarist of the band Dorja, she just left the band recently. Uh, she cited Paul Kossiv as an influence. So, here I've left a rose for you, Paul. Rest in peace. You're all right now. The legendary drummer, Keith Moon from The Who, his ashes are scattered around this villa. I don't know where about, and I don't think he's got any kind of like marker like these ones over there. So I just like to assume that he's buried well, he's actually just escaped. So somewhere around here is or right here 
is where Lynn Sellers' ashes were scattered. And I haven't been back here in over a year. But to honor my friend in America, Foster Hitchman, the man who created the Lynn Fredericks documentary, here are some roses for Lynn Sellers, or as the British public love to know her as Lynn Fredericks. So here you are, Lynn. You deserve these roses. You were an outstanding actress. I hope you're looking down on your beautiful daughter, Cassie, smiling. You will always be remembered. Rest in peace. So I'm kind of guessing that since Lynn Fredericks is buried right in the back, that Peter Sellers' ashes are somewhere in this garden. I really should look it up online, because these graves, they're kind of like hard to like locate. I mean, it's okay like to like keep the stone ones, but just the ones with all the flower beds. They just, um, they don't really stand out, I guess.